you know, last week was Nurses Week. And many of you who know me, right, my son's a nurse. So I celebrated my, my son last week and all of the, the relatives and the nurses and the first responders that have gotten us through COVID. And, uh, and this week's Nurses Week, and I mean, uh, Teachers Week, and uh, certainly grateful for every single teacher here in the state of New Jersey. Again, not only for what they do day to day, but as the, as the work got tougher and harder during COVID, you know, their persistence and their commitment to our children, you know, got us through to where we are here today. But I tell people that there are two jobs I could never do. I could never be a nurse, because I would see a drop of blood and I would be on the floor. And I could never be a teacher, because your patience and your, and your ability to multitask is something that, you know, my husband tells me I don't have patience. <laughs> so I always tell people it is the two professions. So it's quite ironic that uh, it's back to back and, uh, and it's near and dear to me. So people are still coming in and I appreciate everybody. I know that sometimes get, getting to Trenton is really a challenge. So good morning to everybody and thank you uh, very much for joining us here today. As you know, my colleagues have, uh, have hearings um, and so I will get right to it. We are here today to talk about our teachers and more specifically about what's commonly known and referred to as our teacher shortage. New Jersey is at a juncture. Uh, we are seeing countless teachers and professional educators leave the classroom at times when the pipeline of aspiring teachers is thin as it's ever been. I'm gonna put my friend Myla to get a little bit closer. Uh, the reasons for this are numerous. Um, have been discussed at great length. It's much of the media's present in this room, so I will not spend a lot of time in the detailing of the causes. We all know the causes. Suffice to say that the high cost of education, numerous barriers to entry, and high personnel accountability with limited resources, mental well-being, and constantly shifting public perception all play a significant role. This is not a problem unique to New Jersey. The entire country is experiencing the same. But in New Jersey, some of the best schools in the nation, uh, and by the same measure, the best teachers in the country, other states look to us to solve the solutions. And what we do here today and what we do affect the national discussion. The governor realized this as well, and I want to thank him for convening the task force on this topic. The information gained by the gathering of all of those voices around the table is, in, is invaluable, and I appreciate the opportunity to participate. Many of those in this room were around that table. Those discussions will continue, and as we learn, solutions will be required on multi -le multiple levels, and many of them cannot be addressed through just this legislation alone. But some can. And I am deeply appreciative of all of the stakeholder groups that have engaged with me on this. And their constant input has been truly invaluable. And as I shared with them just a minute ago, uh, this is a group of people who can tell me no. <laughs> My husband wished he could do the same. But, but this is a group of people who can tell me no. They can tell me a different direction. They can give me their input. And uh, it's valuable to me. And we meet often. This is not just about teacher shortage, about the real issues that are happening here in New Jersey and across our country. We meet often to discuss them. Uh, likewise, there is no single solution in dealing with them. Uh, the bills that we're introducing here today will seek to address individual issues by removing barriers, addressing costs, and adding resources. Specifically, the bills will address the personal and financial cost of our teachers in the training of higher education. What we've heard over and over again, number one barrier is the cost of education. So we're removing some of the restrictions on the transfer of credits for students and establishing a tuition remission program for student educators. And when we look at the high cost of student teaching, our student teachers you know, go off to, to the, their, the classrooms and, uh, and they don't get paid um, and they still have to pay tuition. So it's another issue that we need to continue to address. Mm -hmm. And addressing the barriers and the cost of certification over and over again. Grateful to all of you for EdTPA. We were able to accomplish that. And really pleased that we were able to, with that single piece of legislation, create a pipeline of more teachers to go into the classroom. But establishing a certification reimbursement fund, eliminating the Praxis basic skills test, and reducing the number of days a student may need to wait to retake 
simple, retaking a basic skills test. So uh, as we move on, you know, creating opportunities for support for professionals and paraprofessionals and how vital the paraprofessionals are to each one of our schools and what they do each and every day and how they aspire to move into the classroom full time themselves and provide opportunities for versatility and advancement by authorizing additional teaching endorsements expand the existing NJ class teacher loan redemption and provide a tax credit to full and part-time teachers and paraprofessionals. This is the way we speak to each and every one of them by providing a tax credit to them. This topic is deeply, deeply important to me and these bills have taken on months of collaboration. A statewide problem requires a statewide solution and likewise we have interacted and consulted with dozens of organizations and individuals. None of this could be developed uh, develop legislation without the information and guidance they provide and I want to thank each and every one of them and especially to Chris Nelson where are you Chris um, he keeps me going he, he, he keeps he, he he answers the calls um, and he works diligently for the people of New Jersey our state teachers are a cornerstone of the society and their importance to our children families and our communities cannot be overstated and yet they are chronically underappreciated or worse. One of the challenges in our jobs is that it's difficult to legislate gratitude and appreciation. But let me be clear, the people in this room and throughout the legislature do appreciate and support our teachers. We know you are struggling. Please know that we keep working together to ensure New Jersey's teachers are the best in America. There are many people here today. Uh, they are uh, assembly bill sponsors. Uh, people who are, you know, obviously in the committee, just want to give some of my assembly members a, a chance to make a few remarks about specific bills that they chose to be prime sponsors on. But to honor and to, to appreciate my good friend, Myla Jaycee, who, um, who unfortunately is leaving us, but you know what? I have her cell number. <laughs> yes. and, she promised, <laughs> and she promised she will answer I at will. any point in time. So Myla Jaycee. Thank you. Um, I think the assemblywoman, uh, the chairwoman, covered pretty much everything. And I want to put a personal note on this. It so happens that this evening I will be at Montclair State University, uh, where my daughter works with teachers. She herself is a veteran teacher. And uh, I will be addressing a class of teachers who are moving into the classroom shortly. And I want to express my gratitude, our gratitude, to them because they've chosen this profession. Um, we need to elevate the profession. We need to respect them. And we need to compensate them properly. And that has been a long-term struggle. And I'm sure my colleagues would agree with that. So um, I will leave it there. Oh, thank you, Myla. Thank you, Myla. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, Assemblyman Moen. Would you like to make a comment? Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Chairwoman. Um, I will be brief because I'm looking around at my colleagues and realize we have a transportation committee meeting at 10 a.m. and I think <laughs> half of the committee is here. Uh, I, I'll be very brief, though, as I mentioned. Um, we've heard so much about this issue already from the Chairwoman. Um, I have the honor of sponsoring the legislation that Bill Number 5425. Uh, it would direct student teaching hours to be reduced to a single semester as opposed to two. Um, I look at this legislation as a triple win because what it does is it re does reduce the cost to those students that have to take those uh, extra semesters of teaching. Think about that. That's the cost that they have to pay in tuition for that extra semester. It's the cost of another semester of unpaid work. And then I'll add my millennial perspective to it, public service loan forgiveness. You cannot qualify for that until you land a full-time job. And so then this is another six months to a year where these students are not, or these students are not becoming full-time educators and adding towards those number of payments and months that you need to qualify for that 10-year public service loan forgiveness. So for those reasons, it's that. It's creating the pipeline, unclogging the pipeline is what I would say, um, to allow for more of those first semester student teachers to have access to classrooms as opposed to being backlogged because of a student needing that second semester. And then finally, through that entire pipeline, it creates a faster uh, opportunity for us to get those students into the classroom as full-time educators. I just, as recently as Friday, I heard from... Could you 
Well, that's my, I think you just recorded my entire speech. Uh, um, I'll, I'll just finish up. Um, I just looked at my clock, uh, my watch. Um, I'll just finish up by saying that as recently as last Friday, I heard from educators in my district about this issue. It's not something that we go, I think, collectively a week without hearing. Mm -hmm. And you'll hear one of the key pieces as we talk about my legislation, the reason that we can do this is because we have members and partners like the NJEA who are coming to the table and telling us about mentorship opportunities that exist in our schools that help us bridge that gap and allow for us to take steps like this to make this become a, an effective program for those student teachers. Um, so with that said, I'm very grateful to be a partner in this and want to thank the chairwoman and the partners that are here from uh, external uh, organizations. Looking forward to working together with everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator uh, We have a sub Spearman. Thank you. Like to make a quick comment? Yes, this will be very quick. Um, as I do in my house, um, when Pam says something, I <laughs> back her up, especially when she's got the unions behind her who know what they're talking about. Our kids are our most, our children are our most valuable asset, in my opinion. And I think our teachers are super important because we put our children in their hands every day and they are underappreciated. Yet in New Jersey, they do an amazing job, as shown by the fact that we have the number one education system for the second year in a row in the country. So Longer than that, but that's all right. Real? <laughs> there you go. I rest my case. So I, I want to thank the chairwoman and vice chair for working with our teachers and working with our unions to improve things for our kids. And um, whatever she tells me to do, I'm with her. So powerful. Thank you. <laughs> so powerful. Uh, Assemblyman Lopez. Thank you. Uh, you know, I, I'm just so proud to join Chairwoman um, Lampett and my colleagues in demonstrating our strong support for teachers and educators, especially during Teacher Appreciation Week. You know, I had the pleasure uh, of speaking to over 100 teachers in Middlesex County on Tuesday about the many issues f facing the profession. And chief among them was a workforce shortage impacting our state. Mm -hmm. I will say then what I say now. Our teachers are integral to the success and future of the state and families. Our teachers are the reason why we have one of the best education systems in the country. And I know the assembly will do everything it can to address the workforce shortage. In this effort, I'm proud to be the second prime sponsor on A5419, eliminating the basic skills test requirement for teacher certification, a policy that will remove yet another obstacle for individuals entering the teaching profession. It is my hope that this bill will remove an obsolete practice and help expedite the credentialing process for new teachers. I also commit to co-sponsoring every bill that is part of this package and to continue fighting for our teachers. And I also want to extend my gratitude to Chairwoman Lampid and Vice Chair um, Jay-Z, I'm sorry. Um, I, I, I just, you know, I, I hate losing you in the assembly. <laughs> I really do, I really do. I hate losing you in the assembly, but guess what? You have my cell phone number as well as you have. Um, and you have mine. Uh, and, and, and I have yours, exactly. And thank you, thank you very much for thank continuing you, your one. advocacy for teachers, that. okay? Thank yes. you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. Summon Varelli, did you want to make a com quick comment? Watch the court. Good morning, everyone. Everybody said they were going to be brief. I won't. How's that? No, I'm, only, I'm, a, I'm only kidding. That's me being out of character. So uh, <laughs> get the shepherd hook. Um, thank you, Assemblywoman Lampett, for your leadership on, on this issue, on these issues. Um, this is government and legislation at its finest. Identifying a problem and targeting the root causes. I know these are 12 bills, and I know there's going to be a lot coming behind it. The 12 bill packages are thoughtful and well-researched thanks to the efforts of everyone here today, as well as the teachers, administrators, parents, and students that work together to make this package as effective as possible. Teaching is more than a job or a profession. I believe it's a calling, and that's what I've heard from teachers and educators. We're seeing difficulties in recruiting and retaining teachers, not only because nobody wants to teach, but because working conditions have deteriorated to such a point that it is no longer the sustainable career that it once was years ago. A5418, which I'm one of the prime sponsors of, along with prime sponsor Atkins, establishes a teacher certification reimbursement fund. 
through the Department of Education to reimburse certain teachers for costs associated with certifications. Mm -hmm. Becoming a teacher is costly, very costly, not only monetarily, but time consuming. Not only do you have to pay for schooling, but you also have to pay for things like fingerprinting, okay, subject matter testing. All this actually comes before you get into the classroom to teach along with these certifications. Um, I didn't know that until recently, and I'm grateful for the education on it. So these upfront costs before a teacher sets foot in the classroom creates a huge barrier that's preventing countless well-qualified people from ever entering into the classroom. So I think this 12 bill package, and I know, like I said, there's more bills coming behind it because I know the chairwoman and how she thinks. I think it's going to be good for everybody, but especially the teachers that are teaching our children moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Assemblyman. Assemblywoman, Assemblyman Tully. Good morning. Uh, first, I just really want to uh, say how proud I am to be here today and thank uh, Chairwoman Lampett, uh, Vice Chair, and all my colleagues in the Assembly and Senate, and uh, of course our, our teachers and, and stakeholders that are here today for this incredible bill package. Uh, I want to speak a little personally about it because not only is this, uh, uh, a, again, an amazing package that, that addresses our, our pipeline and our, and our workforce issues with our teachers, but it's also very personal. Our teachers are part of our community. Many of us are parents here. My son, He's six years old, he's graduating kindergarten in a few weeks. And, uh, and I gotta tell you, the excitement he comes home, the progress he has made this year is directly related to, to his teacher, who she's incredible. We also had an incredible uh, student teacher this year, uh, the first half of the year. We miss her dearly, uh, but part of uh, uh, the package that I'm second prime on with uh, uh, Chairwoman Lampett directly addresses compensation for our student teachers because we, as, as was said, we have the best public schools in the nation, and that's no accident. It's because of our teachers. It's because of our school workforce. And we as legislators need to do everything we can to address this issue, to make sure we're recruiting and retaining the best talent here in the state for our most precious resource, our children. So I really just want to say how proud I am to be here today. And again, thank, thank uh, Assemblywoman Lampett, uh, uh, Vice Chair JC, and, and really all of our colleagues, and just say uh, thank you so much for everything that you do every day. Thank you. Thank you, Assemblyman. And Assemblyman Stanley. Thank you. Good morning. Um, first of all, the three years I've been here, I think this is the first task force that I'm actually seeing come through <laughs> on something. So I think that ha that's because of the chairwoman's mm -hmm. influence in there. Thank you. She's cracking the whip you know, to make sure everyone's <laughs> doing their job, you know. Um, but I just want to, very brief, just want to say, you know, education is the cornerstone of our democracy, mm -hmm. right? And the teachers are the foundation of that education that we provide for our kids. So if that foundation is cracking, or if that foundation is weak, the education is going to crumble as well. So I think all these bills that are being put together, all these packages and everything that's been done the last couple of years, governor's office, task force, all our assembly members, we know the importance of wh what is at stake. So that's why I think it's very important to push all these bill packages through to make sure the teachers are taken care of because the teachers are a very unique breed. They're not just teachers, but they also are many other professions molded into one. Doctors, counselors, construction workers, uh, <laughs> they do a lot of things for the child. And they're also our children's surrogate parents away from home. Mm -hmm. So that's what, why it's very important that we make sure that this foundation remains firm and that we make sure that we do everything we need to do to make sure we push all this forward. Thank you. Thank you, Assemblyman. Yeah. We're really grateful today to have uh, several of our education advocates here today. Uh, Sean is standing right next to me. Sean Spiller is the president of NJA. Sean, Great, please. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. And, and first, I want to say, uh, Assemblywoman Lampett, thank you to you specifically, and thank you to all the other uh, co-sponsors here, because uh, as she noted, this has truly been a collaborative process. It always has been. Um, and she understands the urgency with which we're trying to address this matter. Uh, had the good fortune of serving uh, with her on the governor's task force, in fact, sitting next to her. And absolutely, she was uh, a strong advocate in those meetings. And I see many of our, my colleagues who served on the task force, uh, fellow uh, teacher Henry Goodhue, who served with me as well. 
Uh, but, but we understand that this is the beginning of the work. You know, we know that the challenge that we're facing here didn't just start now. It's been in the making for over 10 years. We've seen a shortage of individuals coming into the profession and, quite frankly, people staying in the profession for over a decade. And as we look at each one of these bills, they absolutely do help move that needle. Uh, but we understand that that needle has a long way to go. And I think we have to keep looking at a lot of different things to make sure uh, that we can get educators to come in and educators to stay. Uh, and I think, as uh, Assemblywoman J.C. noted, you know, we've got to look at those other compensation pieces as well when we talk about salary, when we talk about benefits, health benefits, when we talk about pensions. We've seen those things eroded over the last number of years. It's not a surprise. Over the last 10 years, those have been eroded. And over the last 10 years, we've seen less and less people coming into the profession, less people staying. So I think all of these bills absolutely will help to address the challenges that we're uh, facing. Uh, and we all, I think, it, it, certainly in the educational space, and certainly I know all the legislators who are standing here today, understand the work that lies ahead of us, the urgency with which we need to dedicate uh, to make sure that we keep uh, the number one schools in the nation. But I also know that we have the commitment of all of them as true partners, all of us in the educational space, to keep working on this issue together. So important work ahead, but we are so grateful for these steps as well. So thank you so much. Thank you so very much. A few of our members have to leave. They have to go off to a committee. So uh, next we have the New Jersey School Boards Association. We have Tim Parnell. Tim. Good morning. My name is Tim Parnell, Executive Director of New Jersey School Boards Association, a nonpartisan state-created federation of local boards of education whose mission is to promote the achievement of all students. Our districts have been forced to make difficult decisions to sustain the high quality education and support services that every child needs. And our students are counting on us to solve this problem. And to that end, we appreciate Assemblywoman Lampett's sense of urgency in working with her colleagues to put forward this package of bills that seeks to find solutions to the shortage and we believe this is a crisis. And you may say, well, how could he say it's a crisis? But when our kids are routinely given substitute teachers instead of certified teachers, when our classrooms are overcrowded, and when we don't get the support necessary for children academically and social emotionally, then we have a crisis. And there's not a day that goes by that we don't hear from our members about the difficulty in filling critical positions. And we owe it to the children in the Garden State to take whatever bold steps necessary so that they can learn from qualified educators so they can get help and support when they're struggling. Our association stands ready, firm, and able to work with Assemblywoman Lampett and any other member of the legislature who wants to come to the table. Let's put the political agendas aside and let's focus on the main thing. And the main thing is addressing this shortage so we can support our students in the classroom. They deserve nothing less than the absolute best. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Passionate. He's very, very passionate. And I, and I only met Tim for the first time during the, uh, during the, uh, uh, the task force, and uh, this is a calm suit for him. <laughs> He's usually a lot more colorful, so we had to take it out in his exuberance. <laughs> So we have the New Jersey Association of School Administrators, a gentleman who I have valued his input and value over the number of years. We have Dr. David Adderhold, who's really, really happy that some things that he's been patient about has really come into fruition. Thank you, Assemblywoman, Assemblywoman Jacy, Assemblywoman Varelli. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Dave Adderhold, Superintendent of West Windsor Plainsboro Regional School District. And today I join you on behalf of the New Jersey Association of School Administrators. To Assemblywoman Pamela Lampett, uh, thank you for your consistent uh, leadership in addressing the needs of our educators uh, and New Jersey students. Um, she was um, a stalwart through that task force for the governor and championing um, bills moving forward uh, for us today. She demonstrates leadership in bringing forward 12 bills on critical issues affecting the quality of education for our students throughout New Jersey. The lack of qualified candidates is making a significant impact uh, within our profession. Um, and we need to make sure that we're bringing qualified candidates within teaching as well as our professional support positions. The bills introduced today are derived from recommendations made forward by the New Jersey Association of School Administrators, the Governor's Task Force, 
uh, members of the NJEA and other uh, partner organizations that have done phenomenal work in working in partnership to bring forward legislation and recommendations that have yielded legislation today. These legislative proposals, if enacted, support our new educators and will greatly assist in the recruitment, the retention, um, and supporting uh, new educators and retaining educators in their positions. On behalf of New Jersey Association of School Administrators, our Executive Director, Dr. Richard Baza, our President, Mr. Tony Shangone, who joins us in the audience, as well as our legislative um, advocate, Melanie Schultz. Um, the New Jersey Association supports these proposals. Thanks, Assemblywoman Lampett, Vice Assemblywoman, um, Chairwoman uh, JC, and all the co-sponsors uh, for their initiative in bringing forward these issues of critical need. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, next, we have New Jersey Principal and Supervisors Association. We have Karen Bignot. Karen, there you are. Yes. Good morning, everyone. My name is Karen Bingert. I'm the Executive Director of the uh, New Jersey Principals and Supervisors Association, and I'm honored to represent approximately 9,000 principals, vice and assistant principals, supervisors, and directors from aspiring to retiring stages of their careers in school leadership. Thank you, Assemblywoman Lampett. Um, for your leadership on this bill package, which seeks to address the ongoing and increasingly worrisome staffing shortages in our schools. I would also like to thank all of the assembly women and men, and we're going to miss you, um, <laughs> for supporting um, the, this, the individual bills in this package. You know, it was really a pleasure to serve on the Governor's Task Force for Public School Staffing Shortages with Assemblywoman Lampett and many of my colleagues here today. During our meetings, it became very clear that we must address issues of retention and recruitment, as well as reduce the barriers that keep excellent candidates from coming into a very worthwhile and exponentially impactful career. The bill package being considered today seeks to effectuate proactive change to ensure that our schools are fully staffed by the best educators to continue New Jersey's legacy of educational excellence. Appropriately staffing our special education classes has been one of the biggest challenges in recent years, even before the pandemic, and a broadened certification that allows pre-K to 12 special educators flexibility to apply their specialized training in working with students with learning disabilities is a critical response to the current overly prescriptive special education certificate. The same is true for teachers who work with our bilingual uh, students. Similarly, since, education, since elementary schools often include grades K to four, or K to five, or six, or seven, or eight, uh, a full K-8 elementary certificate allows every school to find a certified teacher to meet the grade bands within their own individual buildings. I look back on my own student teaching, and I remember sitting and doing my lesson planning and trying to figure out how I was going to get high school students excited about writing a research paper. <laughs> and I remember one of my friends who was an elementary education major, and she was planning the start of her day to be having all pre-K to fives sing, I'm alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. I'm alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. I'm alive, alert, awake. I'm awake, alert, alive. I'm alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. That's also, <laughs> but that, that's also how our teachers, that's how our teachers come into student teaching with that same level of energy and excitement. But then they hit an emotional and financial wall during student teaching when they come to understand that they will have to give up their part-time jobs to student teach. Not only do they not get paid for a year-long full-time internship, unlike electricians, plumbers, lawyers, and doctors, they have to pay tuition to do student teaching. When this is added to the cost of testing, fingerprinting, and certification fees, this financial burden is a deterrent for many potential teachers, and it especially hits hard for those from disadvantaged backgrounds. We are thankful for this bill package, which proposes reducing tuition costs, providing loan redemption, maximizing community college transfer credits, paying a stipend to teaching interns, reducing certification fees, and eliminating duplicative and costly basic skills testing for future teachers who certainly have demonstrated basic skills proficiency by earning a bachelor's degree in college. 
NJPSA truly looks forward to today's, to, to, to today's discussion of the entire bill package mm -hmm. as a critical step toward a proactive um, forward. And we appreciate also a proactive uh, chairwoman in, in Pam Lampett, uh, very invested bill sponsors, and a state legislator committed to keeping New Jersey schools fully staffed with talented, dedicated, and student-centered educators. Thank you. And you will have that stuck in your head for the rest of your day, I promise you. And who you. knew we were going to get a solo by Karen today? How wonderful was that? That was a bonus. Um, and from the American Federation of Teachers, the AAFT, uh, Donna Chira. Donna. Thank you. Assembly woman, you said you would never be able to teach. I taught 33 years in Perth Amboy in elementary school special wow. education. And I'm not quite sure I would be able to go into a classroom and teach today. Yeah. Assemblywoman JC, not only am I going to miss you here, but for all your fight for higher ed. Teachers today do more than teach. And as everyone said, there is a shortage and we're losing teachers more than we are having teachers in the pipeline. So it is a dual um, battle that we're, that we're fighting. We need to keep teachers in the, in the classroom to teach because they have the knowledge and the experience to mentor the younger teachers. But we also need to bring new teachers into the profession. And part of it is respect, because when they listen to the news and they see the articles, everything that's wrong in society is blamed on teachers. They didn't do their job. And we need to change that narrative. On this bill package, the one bill I'm very excited one is the Pathway for Paraprofessionals to be able to get a teacher certification. That's not only important because these are people who already work in the system, but many of these paraprofessionals are coming from the community in which they teach. Mm -hmm. So they not only understand and they'll learn the academic and the other components of teachers, but they'll be able to relate to the students in their community. That is important. We also need to start looking at some of the Grow Your Own, because that will also create diversity. A program similar to the Red Hawks Rising in Newark, where it is a collaboration between union, the Board of Education, and the Montclair University. We, cannot no, we can no longer work in silos in education. These bills will not only bring relief academically and financially to our incoming teachers and support for our retain teachers we want to retain. But this is a great step forward. And this will bring and support our next generation of teachers that are truly needed in the state of New Jersey. Thank you both. Thank you all, the whole committee, for the work you have done. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. Thank you all very much.